justice with Judge Maybelline will be life because in everything we do, it involves the law. You came to court to testify about what you heard, what you saw, and what you know. She's fair. I don't have a hearing problem. This ear works good, this one works even better. She's firm. I'm not responsible for that ticket, and I'm not going to pay for it. Who says you're not going to pay for it? I make that decision, not you. She's honest. What do you have to say? All I have to Nothing. say. Nothing. <laughs> this is Justice with Judge Maybelline. Brian Bondango is suing Devin Rikers in the amount of $800. Mr. Bondango claims Mr. Rikers heckled him so badly during his New Year's Eve DJ gig that they got into a scuffle and he lost his job. In the matter of Brian Bondango versus Devin Rikers, you're suing him for $800 for lost wages. Tell me about it. Mom, I have been a salesperson for 20 years. 30 years, in my 30s, and at the age of 35, I decided to change my career because it was a little bit boring. I was looking for something fulfilling, entertaining. Uh, I know I have a very good voice. My friends usually tell me that. So they were shocked when I told them that I'm going to leave my day job to become a DJ because they always told me that, hey, you have a knack for entertainment. So I started DJing, started with friends and families, and... Uh, the war passed, I increased my fan base. All right. So I started playing for private parties, bars, nightclubs, and restaurants. So the owner of um, this restaurant called me and asked me whether I can play for the first three Saturdays in January. I said, yes. Okay. And um, two days before New Year's, he called again and said, hey, my entertainer um, dropped off. Can you fill in the gap for me for New Year's? I was so excited. Because... You mean New Year's Eve? Yes, ma'am. Okay. All right, get to the point. Yeah, so Mr. As I was playing, I, I sing singing with the with the with some most of the time when I play, I sing with the with my my you music. You sing along? Yeah, I sing along. You know, just make sure that so I. So you do more than DJ. You also sing. Well, once in a while, you know, just to get the crowd, um, you know, tune up. Your Honor, it was more than once in a while. I didn't ask you to talk. Oh. Thank you. Go on. Mr. Riker walked to my booth and started telling me that I'm not a good DJ. My face is good for the radio. I was shocked. That's what he told me. So he me. walked over to the DJ booth and told you all this? Yes, ma'am. And this went on for 45 minutes, and I was so pissed off with him. So I left the booth and walked to the restroom to ease up myself and calm myself down. Coincidentally, he walked into the restroom. So y'all had a brawl in the restroom? Well, kind of. He started that. Oh, that is what happened, um, Johanna? He walked in, and I asked him, why were you disturbing my play. This is my show. Why, you, why won't you just go with the flow? No one is walking to my table. And he said, I am good for nothing. He's just doing the people a good thing so that I should leave. Mm. So I said, okay, let me walk out because he was standing on the doorway. So I tried to push him on the side to walk and he pushed me and I fell to the ground. Once he pushed you and you fell to the ground, what'd you do? So I pushed him back and we started scuffling and shouting and mm. we were kicked out of the, 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 so the restaurant. You both got kicked out. Yes, ma'am. And you lost your money for the night? Well, yes. And for the rest of the month? Exactly, Mom. Right. I went back to get my equipment, hoping that, um, and I apologize, sorry, and hoping that I will get the rest of the three, um, the three gigs that I had already for um, January. And the he said, said, no way. He said, no way. He lost money. He had to pay double to get someone to fill in the gap. And he's responsible for... So now you want him to pay you yes, your wages? Yes, ma'am. All right. Now, Mr. Rikers, it's your turn. This is my favorite restaurant, Mancini's Marinara Dreams. I go there three times a week. So when there's all these big posters for New Year's Eve saying that they're having this big DJ, I was excited. So I got a big group of my friends. We were all going, and I'm pretty close with the owner considering I go all the time. And he said that he had a new DJ because the other one dropped out. And I, I mean, I was excited. I, how many group of friends, how many was in your group? There were five of us, ma'am. Okay. Yeah. And I mean, we're all very civil, polite. I think it was more of the other people in there that were really disappointed. And I wanted him to know that people weren't really enjoying it. He was playing music that my grandma why listened he, to. Why did you need to tell him that people weren't enjoying because it? Because you think he had enough sense to say, realize it himself? That, that's the issue. And I think he's a little delusional, which is why we're here. He so couldn't feel the crowd. So who you to be the one to decide whether the people were enjoying it or not? So when things weren't going well, I just wanted to speak up. I just wanted to help him out. And, what, and when you speak up and tell him it wasn't, what, what, what was that going to do? I wanted him to change the music. He was playing very old music. I mean, the entire crowd, I, if you can't tell by looking at the two of us, he's 
two times, three times my age. Everyone there was young my age. We wanted a fun, it's New Year's. How many people was in there at the time? There was 50 people, it was a lot. To get him to change the music, tell me what you said. I just said, I, the face for radio might have been someone else. There were a lot of people. He's singling me out. He's making me the I victim here. I want you to tell me about a lot of people. He said you came up to his booth and yes, said something. Yes, I... I uh, so tell me what you said. Yes, Your Honor. All I said is that he needed to change the music. It wasn't the genre we were looking for. No one was satisfied. It, it was way too old, and I suggested some younger songs he should play. I tried it a few times. I said many different things, but he didn't really respond to anything. And then that is when I ran into him in the bathroom. And my mom made, raised me right. I have morals. I have respect. I would never lay my hands on anyone but my dad taught me that if someone starts it I have to finish it so when he pushed me I, I had to, I had to respond it's self-defense so I did push him back your honor and that I can admit to so you say he, that he pushed you first he pushed and you me responded first. to yes, self-defense and he says that you pushed him first and he responded to self-defense yes. so one of you is lying he was standing well, on I'd be quiet coming up on justice with judge Maybelline who had hired you? The owner of the restaurant. Did he complain about your music? No, ma. Okay, was he saying anything to you? No, ma. Okay, did he tell you to change up? No, ma. So he was gonna pay you no matter what this man said? Yes, but... And that's what you needed to stay focused on. And later... Did you give him the ring back? Honestly, I didn't offer to give him the ring back. I told him that he owed me money for the television that he broke, and if he did not give me the thousand dollars for the TV he broke, I was gonna keep the ring, and it exchange for the debt that he owed me. We're back with the case of Brian Bondango, who is suing Devin Rikers for lost wages. One of you is not telling the truth. I don't know if it may have yep. been a mutual push at the same time. You know, were you coming in the door or out the door? I, I was already in there. Yes. I was washing my hands when I saw him behind me. He approached me, he got in my face, he said was I was standing... a jerk. Ma'am, he said that I was ruining his night. That, that I was losing his fans, that I was making his New Year's miserable, but at the same time, he was making my New Year's miserable. And this is, like yeah. I said, and my you, favorite you place, to, and I was ready to and leave. And you want me to believe that you walked up to him real politely and said, your music is lousy, and you're playing music, and it's not good, and the rest of us would like to hear something else. Why don't you change the music, sir, and play something else? You're trying to pretend to me that that's the tone in which you said that to him. But, Your Honor, you have to remember why we're here, and it's that he, he wants me to pay him $800 for I lost do. wages. Yes. But a wise woman wants once said, if I didn't hire him, I can't fire him. I am saying to you that I don't believe your little cockamamie story that you walked up to him politely and said to him, change the music. You got five friends there. It's New Year's Eve. You went to celebrate. You're drinking. I know you're drinking. You don't like the music. You think he's horrible. You didn't walk up to him politely. It wasn't just me. Really Every, everyone in there was. Everyone else. Yes. I wouldn't care if everybody in there said the same thing. They're not before me. I said, I don't believe your story that you walked to him politely. Have you ever watched one of those reality shows, The Singing Ones? In every single episode, there's just one man who comes on and he thinks he's the star. And? He's born for, this is him. You're watching it. This is the show. You're watching and him right so now. And so what? Is it, yep. So who appointed you? The house, the house person to go tell to him how bad his stuff is. The boss. The You're man, right. The I'm not that person. So why don't you ask him to yeah. sing? Oh, hush. Hush. You got two people here who are equally at fault. Your problem is, Mr. Bundango, is yes. that your job terminated you. The restaurant owner terminated you and made you lose wages. What? And you responded to and allowed yourself to get off into the situation and didn't handle it well. And you didn't handle it well either. I don't know which one of you pushed first. He did. But in my opinion, based upon what I've heard here, both of you are equally at fault. You were at work. You had a job to do. He has a right to say and, you know, call your singing bad or to like it or dislike it. And that's what happens when you're in the public eye doing things like that. And you should be aware of that by now. And you don't have to respond to it. I didn't. You didn't need to respond to him. Who had hired you? The owner of the restaurant. And who told you, did he complain about your music? No, ma. Okay, was he saying anything to you? No, ma. Okay, did he tell you to change up? No, ma. So he was going to pay.
sustain you no matter what this man said. Yes, but... And that's what you needed to stay focused on. Yes, but... That's what you needed to stay focused on. And you should not have allowed yourself to get into inter any interchange or exchange with him about his opinion of what you were doing. I was in the bathroom. He came in. I tried to leave. He pushed me first. You said the opposite. He pushed me first. I don't know who pushed who first, but the point is both of you are equally culpable. The evidence shows it. And more importantly, he did not pay you. So you can't say it was his fault. It was your fault that you allowed yourself to be tricked into getting into an altercation with him. You think you're a good DJ? Others don't. But you don't let somebody like this, a youngster... But you could listen he, to me because you should get another job. You need job. to be quiet. He's just one person. I'm just saying. It's okay. Pay him $400. Judgment for the plaintiff for $400. That's All what I rise. do for you. Now, that's what costs you, so you should think consequences, too, because I hadn't made my ruling yet. All right, then. Because you did play a role in him losing that job, the two of you getting into the, to the altercation. But if you, you're a math I, teacher, you one plus one, if you don't know it equals two, you're going to okay. get fired. If he can't sing, he would have got fired at the and end of the day regardless. And you should have let him get fired, but you should have gotten into no He would have got fired. Close your mouth. You gonna stand here and tell me you're respectful? You've been totally disrespectful almost ever since you've been standing over there to me. Yes. So that's why I know you didn't walk up to him in any respectful manner. Has nothing to do with the way your parents raised you. I'm not one of those who believe and always blame parents when kids or young people or anybody act a fool and say your parents didn't raise you right. I believe they raised you right, but it doesn't mean that we always do what our parents tell us. You, me, and no one else. I believe I've shown you respect. I, I just you don't need have to it shut for him. Your mouth and not open it again. But that's not respectful to talk to me like that either. I believe you need to shut your mouth and not say another word. Judge Maybelline has ruled in favor of the plaintiff. The defendant has been ordered to pay $400. You know what, Brian? I will happily give you the $400. Maybe you can buy yourself a new career. I know I can sing. I'm a good DJ. And I hope I'll never see you again. Coming up. My friends came over. I've had these friends forever. They could get a little rowdy when we're drunk. I've had these friends for so long. And we were playing video games. One of my buddies was by the TV, asked me to toss him the controller. I did very hard, apparently, and broke the TV. Lily Edwards is suing Troy Stevens in the amount of $800. Ms. Edwards claims her ex-fiance broke her TV and says that when she went to sell her engagement ring, she discovered it was fake. In the matter of Lily Edwards versus Troy Stevens, you're suing him for $800 for the cost of uh, replacing a television that you say he broke. Yes, Your Honor. Um, I'm suing my ex-fiance, Troy, for $800 because that is the difference between the television, my television, that he broke, which was worth $1,000, and the fake engagement ring that he gave me um, that was, from my understanding, was worth $1,500. And I went and got it appraised. They told me that they would, it was only worth $500. The market value was $500, and they would only give me $200 for it. So I need my difference from the television that he broke. Did you give him the ring back? Honestly, I didn't offer to give him the ring back. I told him that he owed me money for the television that he broke, and if he did not give me the $1,000 for the TV he broke, I was going to keep the ring in exchange for the debt that he owed me. How did the TV get broken? Someone threw something at the TV, and it ended up broken, laying on the floor. Who threw something? Someone. I oh. believe it was him. Mr. Stevens, what happened? My friends came over. I've had these friends forever. They could get a little rowdy when we're drunk. I've had these friends for so long, and we were playing video games. One of my buddies was by the TV, asked me to toss him the controller, and I did very hard, apparently, and broke the TV. And weren't you paying rent together? I was paying most of the rent, yes. And didn't you, weren't you buying stuff together? Yes, Your Honor, we were. So then it's his TV as well as, as much as it is yours? Not necessarily, because... Okay, explain it. We had a split account, and... We agreed that we would use that account to purchase things for the house, but I took it upon myself to just, you know, treat us to something nice because I felt like we deserved it. We were newly engaged. We're young. We just got our new place. Why not get us a nice TV, Your Honor? Did you use the joint account to buy this television? I did not. I used What'd my own What did you buy the television with? With my own money. How much was that? $1,000. Okay, now what did he buy from the joint account? Miscellaneous stuff. I don't know what like that is. Soap and like dishes and cups and things we needed to live. Then he bought you a ring. 
which was fake. Coming up. That you buying that, everything for your house? Isn't it your TV? Yes, Your Honor, but that okay. also means that the money that he's spending on his, the joint account, that's our money too, correct? We're back with the case of Lily Edwards, who is suing Troy Stevens for property damage. But now she got a TV for $1,000, but... And he broke it. But isn't that y'all's TV? Isn't that, isn't that your... Okay, so that means that... everything for your house. Isn't it your TV? Yes, Your Honor, but that okay. also means that the money that he's spending on his, the joint account, that's our money too, correct? And I bet you haven't given back anything that he bought and from that joint account. He hasn't given no. me back the 800 that he... that I need that, for the money that he broke my TV. I need to be reimbursed. No, darling. <laughs> okay, you got a lot of debts. That's what I read in the brief. Did you pay a credit card debt? Yes, I, I just paid off the $4,000 that was mm -hmm. on the card. So you're going to pay back that? No. I'm so not. why does he have to pay your debt? Or because for he what you, literally... Uh, listen to this. I got to pay for what you want. I want you to pay me back for what I put out, but I'm not paying you back a dime for all the money you put out. That's bottom line is what it is. I put out $1,000 for a TV, and I want you to pay me back. But I'm not going to give you back a dime for all the money you put out for us. But no one asked him to propose to me. I didn't ask to get oh. married. You proposed to me. Oh. You knew I was high have. maintenance. So if, why get yourself into this? He didn't stop me. He didn't stop me. So then he I'm going to put the question back to you. Why you get yourself into this if you had a bunch of, of, of uh, ex, I mean, a fiance with a bunch of rowdy friends that get drunk and break things? Why because get yourself into this? Because I tried to this? accept them for everything that he came with. But I, I, I so spent there's the most answer. of my get paycheck. Yourself into this? I spent most of my paycheck on that TV. And he let his friends come into our home and literally tear up our apartment. I came home and the apartment You're was trash. You're selfish, young lady. You're selfish, young lady. You're totally self-centered, young lady. Judge Maybelline's verdict when justice with Judge Maybelline returns. You should not have been splurging on a TV for $1,000 when the two of you moved in to live together and were paying bills together. It should have been a joint conversation about purchasing the TV. It was not, so you spent your $1,000 that you really couldn't afford, but he's also spending money that he can't afford to help you live. So you can't just ignore that and just keep talking about my $1,000, my $1,000 that I spent. You're being very selfish and inconsiderate. That was a choice you made because that TV meant so much to you. But he's given you stuff too, and he hasn't taken any of it back. He's paid a $4,000 credit card debt. That's much more than $1,000. I'm not going to make him give you another dime. He didn't even ask for the ring back. He did. Well, you didn't give it back. <laughs> You're blessed that he didn't ask as a, as, as a cross complaint for you to reimburse him. You get away good. Because had he asked, you walked out of here owing him. Okay. You got it? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Judgment for the defendant. Judge Maybelline has ruled in favor of the defendant. The plaintiff's claim has been denied. You broke my TV, and now I'm stuck with this cheap ring. Look, I'm sorry I lied to you about the price of the ring, but I spent a lot of money on us. 